And now the internet can see and hear us. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cybernation Uncensored, the session zero of Masquerade of the Mighty. I am the presence, the GM, the story leader for our soon-to-be group of heroes here before me. I am Will, or Arc Like Court. You can find me all over the internet at Arc Like Court. Uh, but let's go ahead and go around the group real quick and at least introduce ourselves, where people can find us, and then we will dive into the character creation process for masks. Uh, let's start with Cynthia. I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all. I'm Cynthia Marie. Uh, pronouns are she, her. Um, my social media, you can find me on Twitter um, at Cynthiancer or Instagram, Cynthia underscore underscore Marie. Um, I am a TTRPG enthusiast. I'm on a little vampire show. I'm actually on a couple of little vampire shows. You may have heard of them. They're by night stuff. Um, I'm also on a whole bunch of other things, uh, but I'm not going to bore you guys with those details. Just go follow my social media. And you can find out where I'm popping up next. I'm hell of excited for this crew, and I'm, I have no idea what I'm creating. So let's do the thing. <laughs> All righty, and then up next, let's go with Adam. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Joseph Ferry. Pronouns, any and all. Uh, find me in all social medias as Adam Turns Heel. Um, and I'm just a variety streamer uh, playing uh, whatever I don't want. <laughs> and uh, that's about it. <laughs> Doing all sorts of fun things. And you can also find me on the bowling lane soon. Getting back into that. So, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Following up. The wonderful Miss Coral. Hi, friends. My name is Coral Reefer. You can find me over at twitch.tv slash queerventuretime, where we just do a variety of chaotic shit. Um, I don't know. We play games sometimes. We chat all of the time. Uh, we we have a good time uh, when it's applicable, but sometimes life is rude and we don't ignore that. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, community-based uh, shenaniganery happening over there. Um, uh, we try to make it feel like, like you got a nice big hug. And then uh, I rant on Twitter at Q Venture Time because Queer Venture Time is too many characters. <laughs> <laughs> and last but certainly not least, our tech godsend and amazing, wonderful friend here before us, ELH. Hi, everybody. I'm ELH. Uh, I go by any and all pronouns. Uh, of course, as was just said, if there are any tech issues, please immediately DM me and I will do my best to fix them on the fly. You can find me on all the socials at ELHMK1. And I'm more of a Star Trek Adventures, Fallout, uh, Transformers, do a little bit of Warhammer 40k, but my mainstay right now is uh, definitely Cyberpunk and Star Trek Adventures. Um, other than that, I'm excited to be here, excited to be with these lovely individuals, and I'm looking forward to getting to play. Wonderful. So, for those of you who have been following me for some period of time, We'll remember a very familiar Masks, a new generation story that was once told before. And the reason why I bring that up is because we are doing character creation or session zero for Masks, the Masquerade of the Mighty. And we are bringing a very familiar character from the Society of Sabres here to the Masquerade of the Mighty, which is Galaxia. Coral Reefer has blessed us with bringing this wonderful outsider, this alien majestic being into this world to help yet another team of heroes accomplish their goals, meet whatever necessary accomplishments are needed, and probably supply them with a handful of extracurricular, extraterrestrial items. Um, Coral, if you would like to describe Galaxia for everybody. Also, for my yeah. notes, can you spell it for me? Oh, yeah. Um, Galaxy, Galaxy, I-A, probably. 
Yes. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Um, it's been about a year since we played this character, but um, all I can think of is um, the face that, that I'm going to do for it. Um, so we'll start there. Um, Galaxia is, is not a human. Um, uh, the, the pronouns are whatever form, the, uh, whatever form she's taking, uh, it, they change, uh, it's fluid. Um, but, uh, I, I will usually use she because, um, me and she's, her form is star stuff. She is literally, uh, like if, if you peer under her mask, uh, or like deep into her eyes, you will see, um, both, both the, the vastness, uh, and beauty and creation that lies in space. Um, so yeah, she has the ability to shapeshift. Um, into uh, she has radical shape shifting. That's the technical uh, crunchy uh, written response term. there. Yeah. So um, she's uh, she's uh, able to to do a whole hell of a lot. She's able to uh, uh, experience as much of um, of humanity as as she can. Uh, she's really, really into uh, the people that she uh, found herself among. She's met some really cool folks, and she's met some folks who are not really cool, and she's all like, I want to know why. We're, we're figuring out humans and the way they work. Um, she's also stunning, stunningly beautiful. Um, and has power over uh, her pheromones. So um, she can totally just be like, hi, you think I'm really pretty. And then they're like, yeah, you're really, really pretty. Um, and let's see. Um, she comes with a, uh, a Starcraft. I mean, how else did the bitch get here, right? Um, so she, she, yeah, she's got a, a, a Starcraft, uh, whose strength and weaknesses I need to either remember or re-choose. Um, she, uh, like I already said, is, uh, super duper into humanity and, uh, tends to see the best in them. And that is a mechanical thing. Um, and she also... Uh, she also gets uh, access to uh, her cool alien shit, too. Um, she's not totally removed from, from her old world. Uh, but yeah, it's... it's uh, Let's see what, what was said in chat here. It's almost a little bit of Starfire meets Silver Surfer. Um, and I'm not sure of who Astral is, but yes. Um, Starfire meets Silver Surfer is a, is a good... A good... Uh, a good a good way to good <laughs> combination there uh yeah. so with that uh to make everybody else uh especially those here in chat with us watching the stream today that is how open-ended mass a new generation is uh it is a powered by the apocalypse system that uses a 2d6 uh success fail system but failing isn't always a bad thing, especially empowered by the apocalypse systems and in specific masks and new generation. Uh, you'll roll two dice and add a modifier that comes from the different stats, which are uh, your labels on your playbook. Uh, and each one of those will vary depending on what move or what ability that you're going to be accessing at the time. In normal circumstances, uh, two through six means a fail. That, again, does not always mean that you're going to fail. That just means that you've left the narrative of the situation up to me, the presence, or the GM. When that happens, you will mark a box called Potential, which is featured on the first page of every playbook. Once five of those boxes are marked, you unlock an advancement on your character. That can mean you get a new power. 
That can get, mean you get access to an ability from another playbook. That can mean your secret identity has been upgraded or you get a bonus to one of your labels. And this continues to happen throughout the entire game in the long form. So don't be surprised if in the middle of a game, in the middle of a session or a comic, to see one of the members here evolve and gain a new power or a new form or a new ability that they didn't have prior to. Going back to the dice rolling mechanics, uh, everything from a 7 to a 10 is considered a mild success. You guys will then narrate to me how that success takes place in the fastest and easiest way for that to happen. On an 11 or a 12, that is an extreme success. Not only have you succeeded, but you have now created an opening for any of your allies or yourself on their next role interacting with that situation, that NPC, that enemy, or that ally. With that being said, though, that is the bare basics of masks. The next step we go to is what playbooks did you guys feel best fit your characters? Uh, let's start with ELH. Sure. So actually, I was between three playbooks because I'm one of those people that has a billion ideas and never knows how to choose just one. Um, the first one I was looking at, I was looking at the Soldier Playbook. Uh, the Soldier Playbook, for those who don't aware, uh, basically Captain America is the quickest and easiest way to summarize the Soldier. Um, really, I haven't thought of a good name for them yet, but... It's not just the soldier, there's also the possibility of doing the joined playbook, and quickest way to explain that one is if anyone's old enough to uh, remember the Wonder Twins, that's kind of how they work. Um, and then the last one I was considering that literally occurred to me probably about 50 minutes before this whole thing started uh, was the Transformed, or something like the Beast from uh, uh, X-Men, or is it the Thing from Fantastic Four? Am I remembering yes. that correctly? Yeah. And yeah, I'm sort of just going to let everybody else choose. And then as they're sort of choosing, I'll probably narrow in on one of those three. All righty. Well, if that is the direction uh, for you to make it easier for you to get your idea for the character, mm -hmm. um, let's jump over to Adam. Uh, which uh, playbooks were you looking at? Using? Uh, well, I was choosing between um, the brain and um, the, uh, the Janus. But I believe I just narrowed it down to just being the brain. Um, yeah. <laughs> Those are the two I chose anyway. Can you all hear I me? I love it. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, good. So with... Uh, give me your idea for your character using the brain uh, playbook. Okay. So the brain is just basically the genius uh, of the group. Um, doesn't really have superpowers besides, besides super intelligence. Uh Think of uh, people like uh, Doctor Strange. Uh, I mean, he does have powers, but he's also uh, quite smart. Um, uh, Hank McCoy, um, you know, people like that. Um, I am. Uh, my name is Jules Graysepark. Um, he, him, and um, I kind of just uh, smart. I was kind of smart all my life. Uh, it was first discovered when I basically did the basic Rubik's cube um, test uh, at three years old um, and went through school, got the best grades and all that um, and kind of just studied to just be the uh, smartest person. Um, got into robotics um, and uh, as well as medicine and during that time uh, kind of met someone along the way um, and of course, uh, fell in love with that person, and um, they were um, about to get married, but things happened, and we um, discovered some kind of rare, um, what did I write down, kind of very rare condition uh, with her. Um, and of course, being the scientist that we both are, uh, I basically, um, we kind of researched and tried to find an attempted cure and it seemed to have worked at first, but um, has um, 
time went on, things were happening to her that were basically killing her faster uh, than the disease actually was, or the condition actually was. And the only way I was able to say, uh, save her was to uh, kind of eliminate her memories and put her consciousness into a robot, my robot sidekick, uh, who we call Malin. Um, Malin? Yes. Um, Malin has all the intelligence of my former partner, um, but um, like I said, has no memory of actually our, any of our time together. Oh. Oh. Because that would be dangerous. Oh, so much to work with. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so not to take away from the, the wonderful backstory that was given here for Jules Gray Spark, the two abilities that you have chosen is the robot sidekick. Uh, I got the robot sidekick. I forgot I had the choose. I, I was uh, my abilities was just to choose one according to the oh, playbook. Yeah. Looking at um, it right now, did say yeah. I could choose another if you'd like, but <laughs> um, also for description, um, do you want to do descriptions yet or no? Um, you can give the description now if you already have it prepared and ready. Uh, he's a professor in his late forties. Um, not not black skin, but like dark tan skin. Uh, salt and pepper hair. Um, okay. Turquoise plaid uh, waistcoat and trousers. And a teal green lab coat. Um, when you meet him, um, you'll all, he wears the same fragrance every day. You'll smell pralines and cream on him. And um, wears wire-rimmed transition lenses. For any occasion. Nice. I mean, they're transition lenses. They're for any occasion. Exactly. <laughs> for parties, <laughs> like literally any occasion. <laughs> and is Jules Indoor, Grace Park outdoor? using his name as his hero name? Uh, he is. He is? Okay. Yes. Awesome. Now, with that, you uh the next part to look over we have the backstory up to this point for everything um relationships and influence we will do at the end once everybody's characters are all tied together and know why you guys are together um your three brain moves that you chose I wrote that down somewhere. Let me see here. I chose... Ah, yes. Scientific Insight, um, which I have achieved a mastery over a field of science and technology. Um, always prepared. And... This was a tough one to choose my third one. Um, logical angle. I was just going to recommend that if you were having a little trouble deciding. Yeah. Uh, logical angle will definitely come in handy. Through exactly. and through. Um, the other portion of the character sheet here is your shame now for that <laughs> given <laughs> the the backstory of jules gray spark um some of these might fit some of them don't make very much sense as far as what jules has worked for or worked towards up to this point um, the two that I will say stand out the most to me uh, would be a prototype AI, which would be that of Milan, mm -hmm. and an altered former ally. Um, it's kind of a mix between altered former ally, or and the the way I see it in my backstory that she became so erratic that she basically was became a catastrophic weapon. Oh we will 
definitely need to have a little bit more discussion. Or or, or a living monstrosity. Definitely. We'll sure. talk. Absolutely. Absolutely. About that. Absolutely. Um, so, Mark, either one of those. You don't have to say out right now for everyone. Um, the next portion of that. Whenever you are confronted with your shame, either mark a condition or shift your superior down and your danger up. You got if it. If your shame is an NPC, which we have currently identified, um, they can never lose influence over you. So okay. with in influence, we'll discuss again towards the end once everybody's characters are all built up, but that shame will always have some kind of draw or pull towards you. Um, at the end of every session, at the end of every book, we will, I will ask the same question is, did you take steps to make amends for your shame? If you answer yes, then you mark potential. If you answer no, then you give influence to one of your teammates here moving forward. This is going to be. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is. There are going to be heartstrings. There is going to be tears. Uh, there will be very, very much so an emotional growth for the character of Jules Gray Spark through the Masquerade of the Mighty. Um, but with those things all together, um, one other thing that you will do here is at character creation, you will increase one of your labels, whether it be danger, freak, savior, superior, or mundane, by plus one. Um, if you look at the character sheet, the whited out area is where your modifiers currently are. So you have a zero in danger, a zero in freak, a plus one to savior, a plus two to superior, and a minus one to Monday. Okay. So. I, I feel free to ask any questions about it if you need. I know so, for some of us, it's our first time. Yeah. So, I mean, superior is, it, I, I'm, it, it, would that have anything to do, do with like strength, like physical strength or? So your labels are... Yeah how your character views themselves it is their them identifying their own self-image so for instance superior is uh you see yourself as a smart capable crafty quick thinking person um people who don't know you who are around you might look at you as being the smartest person in the room or like tony stark drinking in the corner rambling about you know micro neutronic explosions um you you view yourself as uh, with the label of superior when you think that you are more clever than everyone around you or you know exactly what to say to make the people around you do what you want them to do gotcha gotcha um, gotcha each, uh like i said each one of the labels is more so has to do with self-identity than any mm -hmm. like physical aspect of your character as it is gotcha um so definitely don't I don't uh, so I, I could add one plus one to anything right now. Um, yes. I'm looking between danger and almost even a freak or a savior. Um, I so for that, does your character see themselves as threatening and strong? No. Strange and unusual. No. Or defending and protecting. Okay. There it there it is. That would be savior. Yeah. They're working towards becoming the person yeah. that they wished they were before. Okay. So then I would definitely do savior then because the the well while I, I, I do believe I did the best I, I believe the best to keep someone alive the um the guilt still kind of hurts yeah so, so i think you're, I'll click. you're using that pain to try and become better a better version of yourself the version right. you wish could have been there at that point in time 
Yes. So I would definitely mark that plus one to Savior. You make me cry. We just started this session. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's beautiful. I love oh, it, though. I love you. it. There's so much. Oh, there's so much story to be had there with Jules. Awesome. Um, so in the meantime, I want you to look over the question when our team first came together. And I want you to look over the relationships portion and see in what uh, uh, answering the when our, fir- our team first came together, uh, how your character uh, responded to that situation with the question that's there. Mm-hmm. And then looking over the relationships, who from the team fits best fits the two blanks in that area. Okay. All righty. Mm-hmm. So then after the wonderful, beautiful character there, we're going to move now to Miss Cynthia Marie. That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> Sorry. It's just, uh, 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 <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry. Uh, you, don't forget you, you can just be a sexy girl from space. That's also an option. <laughs> also an option. Got it. The number Got it. one option, but unfortunately number one option was already <laughs> taken. Already taken. <laughs> It's all right. I mean, I'll be the sexy girl from Earth. It's fine. I did make Malin sexy. Not really, but sexy to Jules. <laughs> sexy to Jules. That's right. <laughs> all righty. So Cynthia, uh, having looked over the playbooks, which ones were you drawn to initially, and which one do you feel you are more leaning towards now? Yeah, so um, initially I was leading into the Scion um, because I really liked the idea of having like a villainous like parent. I thought that was because I love Polaris and and Magneto. Um, I was looking at the star um, because it's it's pretty easy and kind of up my my alley. Um, And I was also looking at um, the Nova. Um, and at a snap decision, listening to what everybody else is doing, I don't feel like the Scion is is the way I want to play my game. I also didn't like the a little bit of the power set. Um, so I am definitely leaning into my next favorite, which was the Nova. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. So what about the Nova drew you to that playbook over the other two? Yeah, so um, I think I really want to play um, very much like Polaris from from X Men. Um, I think she has one of the coolest power sets. I think she's super underrated, and um, I actually really appreciate that she has a bit of a um, mental health hero situation going on with her. So, um, looking at the power set of the Nova, I was like, I think I can create my version of what Polaris would look like in this world. Um, yes. So I'm kind of kind of here for it. All right. So moving forward with the Nova. So there is a wonderful, fun mechanic specific for the Nova. If you look down at your options, it is called burn. Yeah. When you charge up your powers, you will roll plus conditions. Now, this is another... Uh, part of the game mechanics that is so much fun to get into thematically because this affects how your character is responding to the world around them, especially on those all two fairly consistent rolls of two through six. Uh, Once you roll a two through six, for the vast majority of the time, save for one very specific move, uh, which we'll bring up later on, you will be afflicted with a condition. Those conditions are either afraid, angry, guilty, hopeless, or insecure. Each one of those, as you can see, directly affect your labels and even some of your basic moves like engaging a threat or comforting and supporting other players. It is very, very important. For the Nova, 
you charge up your powers by rolling plus conditions. Great! The more conditions you have, not all five, which would be very bad, the more conditions you have, the better. And you hold on to those burns. You spend those burns on flares. Those flares are your abilities. Of those wonderful flares there in front of you, which four are you most interested in? Oh, I am definitely interested in Reality Storm. Ooh, okay, okay. Um, I think Overcharge was the other one that I really liked. Um, I liked Warship. Oh. And I'm stuck between two. Which two? Either Constructs or Elemental Awareness. I feel like with the gravity kind of pull kind of stuff, I kind of want to do Elemental Awareness. So you're going with the gravity manipulation for your powers. Okay. Uh-huh. I will. <laughs> absolutely go for the elemental awareness all right um, think of it as magnets being drawn yeah. you can't bring a magnet in and you can't affect them unless you are aware of them and yep. since they are a naturally occurring thing to be aware of them at all times would absolutely fit the idea perfect. that we're going with here perfect Now, I did bring it up beforehand, and we'll touch on it again here. As for the conditions, though it is in the Nova's best thought and approach to have as many conditions marked as possible, uh, if you have all five conditions marked, you are removed from the panel, which Ooh. means that your character has found themselves unable and unable to affect the world around them in any way, shape, or form. Got it. Your character leaves. And that is on the presence or the GM to narrate how and in what way your character exits the panel. To add a layer of depth to the masks game that we are going to the mask series that we are going to be a part of here together we'll let you all know when five conditions are marked and you are asked to exit the panel your character gives up being a hero they walk away there is no longer a desire to be the best version of themselves because they have already tried as hard as they can up to this point. Which is why two of our wonderful team members here taking the two abilities that they did in Logical Angle and the best of them for comfort and support. Comfort and support helps remove a condition from an ally or yourself. So we'll need to, as heroes do for each other, as friends do for each other, and as those working together do for each other, watch out for one another. And think about the mental, emotional, and physical drain that always trying to give your best can have on those around you and yourself it's very important that we touch on that it's very important that we bring that up because this is as you've just pointed out cynthia hard mode you guys are heroes you guys are going to become the next sentinels of the city in this masquerade of the mighty so let those jitters out let that that weight kind of wash away as we haven't even gotten to the game yet. We're still here in character creation. 
Um, with all of those flares now chosen, your ability chosen, um, describe what your character looks like. How do they carry themselves? How do they speak to other people? How do they speak to other heroes? Good questions. So I'm going to just start riffing because uh, I haven't thought of this fully through, um, but I have thought of a superhero name and I have thought of her full name. Oh, let's 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 go for that. Awesome. So her full name um, is Stella Iaman. Um, and if anybody wanted to know, Iaman is, um, I think I'm saying it right, is Spanish for magnet. Um, yeah. So um, her superhero name is Flux. Because I'm a nerd. <laughs> um, she carries herself relatively confident. Um, but I think that's just the exterior. I think on the interior, she, she's a hot mess. Um, so actually, you know, speaking of that, I think... I think instead of overcharge, I think I want to use shielding. What do you think? I... L- Love the idea of shielding. I also love the idea of boost. Boost. Uh. Oh, that's cool too. Let me think about how one of those two. I like the idea of shielding because I feel like in in times of fear or anger, she would probably try to shield as much as possible. Oh yeah. Um, so she's kind of kind of confident, kind of a little bit like. I don't want to say cocky, but like she's like right at that level. Um, she has brazen. Bright... Yeah, brazen. Yeah, she has bright orange hair. Um, she's very sleek looking. Um, she could have been a model in in her her time, but she chooses to not really talk about that. Um, and she's just kind of kind of around. Doesn't really know anything about her her backstory. She was orphaned, grew up kind of became an adult and just living her best life as best as she can love she does know that she's latina though i will give that much she does know that yes but i think i'm gonna leave it to you gm you can fill in the blanks i'll send notes i'll definitely send notes Again, I really love the story of Polaris where she actually really didn't know what her background was until she started finding like all the things. So like, yeah, yeah. And it, it took for her brother and sister to go after her for her to find out that they're her brother and sister. And that meant that her dad is the big bad. And it's just, oh, yeah, yeah. Love it. So I was drawn to Scion originally. But... <laughs> <laughs> all righty. And as with uh, Jules. For Adam, you have a plus one to add to one of your labels. Which one would you like to add add it to? Somebody said she didn't understand the gravity of the situation. Lone Squid, get out of here. You can only pun on my channel. No, stop that. (laughs) Oh, I love it. So which which label would you like to add that plus one to? And remember, these labels are the self identity, the the how how flux or how Stella views herself ultimately. Um, mm. I don't know. I got caught up with the pun. Say it again. <laughs> You have a, a plus one to add to one of your labels. Danger, oh. freak, savior, superior, or mundane. Um, which one would you like to add that to? And again, the labels don't have don't directly have anything to do with the physical characteristics of your character. It is the self-identity. It is how she sees or views herself to the uh, to the rest of the world. I think danger. I feel like danger she feels like she's a danger to the world well that can tie to one of two things that can tie to danger or that can tie to freak does she see herself as somebody that people should steer clear of um and that she's threatening and 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 strong or does she see herself as not like anyone else 
completely separated, strange, unique, and powerful, but not to any norm or mold. Feel more like danger because I feel like an idea of where she first used her powers was at a fashion show where shit went real bad. And this is why you shouldn't have metal wires in bras. Uh-huh. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so plus one to danger, which will work wonderful for a lot of the things that you are using that do tie directly to danger. So this is, again, loving it. I got notes to send to everybody. Um, so similar to Adam, I want you to look over when our team first came together. Get an idea of how Flux or uh, how Stella would have responded, reacted uh, with that question in mind. Okay. Look over relationships. What two team members fit the two blanks that are there? And then the influence we will cover at the end. Cool. Alrighty. Um, and just before our break, ELH. Yeah. So, yeah, I, you know, it took me, what, 41 minutes to make up my mind, but uh, I think I have something <laughs> solid. The only thing I'm stuck on is the accent to use when in character. It, I, you know, as some people have mentioned in chat, I've got a decent Conry, I've got a decent Slavic, and I'll, I'll figure out one or the other at some point. But uh, no, uh, Prism is uh, going to be a Transformed. Um, they are going to look like a cross between a Dungeons & Dragons Dragonborn and an Aarakroka. So kind of a prismatic bird person made out of living crystal. And for the transform powers, uh, I specifically was going to take the impenetrable armor and the inhuman might. Um, though I'm between inhuman might and transmuting flesh because if I do transmuting flesh, I kind of have this idea that since they are living crystal, they can just make whatever limb they need. But there's also that appeal to inhuman might. And I'm, I don't know which one to take. Well, if you really, if you really think about it with the impenetrable armor, and the transmuting flesh, mm -hmm. you basically have inhuman might. Mm. And that's, uh, yeah. again, one of the wonderful things about the game is any of these abilities that are listed here don't have to directly be exactly as it's written. You can add your flavor. You can add your flair. You can give it that personal feeling that you're looking for in it. Uh, much like Galaxia's pheromone control in that she is just the sexiest space being to ever grace anyone's presence. Yeah, I'm going to go transmuting flesh on that. I, that's a no-brainer for me. Instant. Done. On oh, the character yeah. sheet. Uh, what else do I have to go over? So the three transform moves, um, I took be the monster because, I mean, that just, you, you have to when you're the transform. That just feels like it's amazing. Um, I also took Unstoppable, which will let me juggernaut through walls, because why not? Um, but a very important and perhaps the most important transformed move I am going to take is Wish I Could Be, which does give me that comfort or support option, plus a little bit of drama where, you know, I'm like, man, I, you know, I wish I was normal like you, or I wish I had control over my powers like you, etc., etc., etc. Yes, love Would it. Would you say you wish you could be... Part of, part their of world. this world. <laughs> Do you really want me to sing? That's the real question I have to ask here. I mean, <laughs> only if it's in the Slavic Connery voice, but still. Oh, part okay, of that okay. World let's is let's let us be very very clear. <laughs> I can do some Slavic, and I can do shun. Oh, God, I'm trying to mix Connery with Slavic, and it's just not working. Um, I don't know. Like. Well, it'll probably be just session one will come around and I'll just do a voice and I'll be stuck with it because that's how these things work. I mean, just to be fair, that is about the same Russian accent that Connor used. <laughs> not wrong. Well, it, uh, it depends on whether or not we're talking Red October, more of a slurring of the sheshes, if we're doing more of a James Bond kind of scenario where it's shaken, not stirred. <laughs> so I'll figure it out eventually. Yeah. 
Uh, what else? What so, else? Oh, my labels. Um, I'm gonna do plus one to savior. All right. And then when it comes to backstory, if you'll permit me to rip off of a uh, certain Dr. Manhattan, I think I kind of want it to be one of those things where I was just a normal scientist or engineer at uh, Kern or CERN, depending on how you uh, want to say it. And uh, I stuck my head in the wrong position and that very, very powerful beam changed me instantly. Which, so, fun fact, by the way, somebody actually in real life has done that, and they didn't become a superhero, but, you know. No. No, they didn't. Their name will be remembered, but we no, they're can't still alive, talk actually. about it. They're still alive. As far as I know, anyway. The guy who took, what was it, 200 and something joules of particle it, accelerated energy to the brain? Isn't he still alive, or did I miss something? No, he died. Oh, I stand corrected. Yeah, but let's for prism that didn't happen. <laughs> um, so the description you gave was of this like, uh, uh, in Pokemon lingo, like an Archeops but crystallized. Man, that's a reference. I was thinking more of like a Blaziken mixed with a Mewtwo, if that makes any sense. Okay, okay. I like that. I like that. But they are using this like crystallized uh, 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 armor to them. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, again, to use a Pokemon reference, if you've seen the trailers for the new game, um, kind of whatever that crystal mechanic is that they've showed off. Oh, Terra, Terra, Terra something. Terror. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Uh... No, Lone Squiff, there are no channel points to make me sing, uh, unless GM Rob feels like torturing me. So, GM Rob, there there, there you go. Get that one for free. Yudahime may be the one to ask for that one, but I won't encourage that in any way, shape, or form to be a point redemption at some point in time in the future. All right, it's Cyber Nation Uncensored. Let's confirm that we'll be redeemed by next stream. Excellent. <laughs> um, okay, so scientists... For CERN, stuck their head in a, an energy particle, something or other, and came out this bird-like crystal being. Mm -hmm. Okay. And have they chosen to give up their former name in place of just being called Prism? I think so. I think they're kind of past that initial couple of weeks where they're figuring out who am I now? You know, what do I go by? Can I even go back to work? So they're still going to struggle with some of that, but they're over that initial hump, if that makes any sense. Yes, absolutely. Um, for that, notes to be sent here and throw between the here rows, um, we will definitely have a conversation about their former name and former life beforehand. Um, once again, the comfort and support skill coming in wonderfully clutch here, because it will be a very important thing, especially when we move into tabletop role-playing games, as many of us do in order to escape the real world and for the benefit of our own mental health, it is important for all of us to make sure that we are all okay and not just ourselves individually. So this is a wonderful way for us to show that even in game, we can look out for each other, be there for each other and comfort and support one another. Um, with all of the information we've gathered here now for the first portion of the character creation, we will get ready to move to our first break. We will see you guys very soon. Go ahead and get yourself something to drink bio break send the stream to your friends tell everybody about this amazing crew of soon to be heroes that will be aligning here on cybernation uncensored we'll see you guys after the break thank you so much
one. And the internet can now see and hear us once more. And welcome <laughs> back, everybody, to session zero of Masquerade of the Mighty here on Cybernation Uncensored. Once again, I am joined by this wonderfully eclectic and seemingly fantastic four themed group of Cynthia Marie, Adam Ferry, Coral Reaver, and ELH. In the break, we did go over a few little things here in the background, but we will be touching on them as we continue forward. Uh, so the last part that we left off on was starting the development of the relationships. So let's start with, you guessed it, Cynthia and Flux for the relationship choices that you've yeah. made. So if you want to read the sentence with the character in mind for the relationship and then give like a, a short brief description of how this came to be cool 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 yeah so um my first bullet point here is you hang out all the time with galaxia uh to blow some steam at and i kind of added some stuff at fashion shows drag shows and fashion house parties because that's just how we roll um i think that's the best way that um Flux can kind of blow off some steam because she can kind of go into this more faux idea of Stella um, versus having to actually be herself. Um, so, and I think, it. yeah, I think uh, having uh, Galaxia around kind of kind of helps to kind of contain like her fears of her own self because she has to like constantly show Galaxia like what a human's supposed to be like. <laughs> I love it love it so much so does stella have her own drag name or is she using her normal name as her oh she drag? uses her superhero name flux flux is oh. definitely a drag name for her absolutely uses it got yeah. it yeah in fact it should probably be like her drag name would probably be like flux incapacitating incapacitator yeah like i feel like that would be her But she's. I can't she's like, say. I can't say this is the first time I've had to have a separate file for drag names for players in the game. It's like the the uh, Phineas and Ferb. If this, if I had a nickel for every time, I'd have two nickels. It's not that it, that's a bad thing. It's just weird. It's happened twice. <laughs> oh, well, Will, you have played this game with me now twice, so <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> I don't think I could put the blame on you, though. I appreciate <laughs> you way too much to blame you for this. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would like to go on record, though, that she is a... Um, she is a dra drag mama. She doesn't actually do drag, because um, I, I don't want to... I don't want to go there. Like, I just love supporting my drag queens and, like, being a fellow queen herself. Um, she's... She makes up her own name so she could be like one of the one of the gals, but she she doesn't actually do the drag. She just like watches and supports. As the flux ambassador, she gives energy yeah. to the other queens there. Yeah. yeah, and I also have a fan of shade. Like, let's not go there. <laughs> Alrighty. And then the next one. The flip side of it is uh once you uh wait, you once hurt and Adam, remind me of your character names. It Jules Gray Spark. Jules. Jules. Gray. I'm taking notes. <laughs> Gray Spark. Um, so basically, you once hurt Jules Gray Spark when you lost control of your powers. And I think that came in the form of, a, of our first meeting. Um, I'm going to say, uh, I think she probably went to his laboratories at some point. I, mean, I will have to figure this out. Um, and she lost control, probably seeing a little bit of what was going on in there and um, all the metal that kind of started happening. She lost control and basically started to attract all the metal like towards uh, Jules Gray Sparks. Um, did you do you have a metal like anything on you? Do you wear any sort of device? I would think I'd probably have some form of uh, Rolex at some point or I did. Until I met you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean you. I feel like it was a lot more dire than that, though. I think it was like all, like every bit of like metal that was anywhere near the laboratory, like just started kind of like coming towards both of us. Yes. What if, what if it was uh, the robot sidekick that Jules has? 
Woof. So right, so Malin like hurt me. The yeah. So Malin was uh, was being pulled towards Flux um, while I was uh, kind of fine tuning her. Um, I refer to Malin as her, um, and and then all of a sudden she just starts moving to like closer and closer. And like like, are you all right, my dear? Uh, like, <laughs> just like <laughs> I just start flying towards Flux. <laughs> it's like, oh hello, um, what? <laughs> I need your help. I I need to figure this stuff out. I don't know what's going on with me. Actually, it it occurs to me if I can interject real quick. If you went to the lab, because I think when we get to me, we're going to talk about how Prism and Grace Park know each other. But just throwing it out there, if you cause some sort of like cataclysmic crunch, I guess is how we'll call it. Maybe mm -hmm. that crunch is how Prism ended up with their powers, because that's when they crossed into the beam, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, I do affect the electromagnetic field, so that is that is a thing. We have an Ooh. origin story in the team origin story. Wow. Hey, yo, I heard you like Whoa. origin stories, so I put your <laughs> origin, origin stories story in an in origin, origin, origin story. story. <laughs> it's Inception origin stories. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, am I supposed to have the Inception sound effect queued up? Oh, hold on. The top <laughs> isn't spinning anymore. <laughs> Alrighty. So now with those relationships laid out, let's move over to ELH. Sure. So uh, you know, since we are kind of spoiling a little bit here, so since I am gonna be at the same lab or facility as Jules Grace Park. Um, I'm going to say that they knew Prism before they changed. And then um, I think I was looking at Galix or Galaxia, and I'll say it right eventually. Um, I'm going to say that Galaxia comforts or comforted me when I was at my lowest. Um, I haven't decided what that lowest looks like yet, but I'm just like, it's one of those like long island scenes where you kind of got like a pier in the distance and we got cars going by and I'm just sort of sitting there with an oversized thing of ice cream just scooping it in my mouth and Galixia's there like, it's okay, buddy, it's okay. Spaceship lands just outside of the bridge where the sun's setting. Mm -hmm. Galaxia's, get in here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for a fly. Ooh. Wait, wait, I can fly? <laughs> oh, wait, no, that was the other thing I thought of during break. Um, Am I electromagnetic enough for Flux to throw me? So, Ooh. the, we'll go with not unless you allow it. Okay. Because like it. you have the transmuting flesh ability. It is in your normal state or normal usage of it, this crystalline appearance, but you could polarize it for Flux to be able to interact with. I love it. I love it. Awesome. So I someone already it. said fastball special. Love it. Mm -hmm. Was that a sport I reference? That I don't was know a we sports can... ball net reference. Is that part of is that part of the TOS? Did I violate any TOS there? <laughs> I was like, I don't. I think legally we can say that. I don't think Marvel trademarked it yet, but I think we're oh in the God. clear right now. <laughs> so oh, even that, you. it's okay with TOS, but not with DMCA. That part. That part. You no. Know. Which All it's right. okay because that one we get three strikes. So. Also true. So Prism has the Jules Gray Spark knew you before you changed, having worked at the same lab, and that Galaxia comforted you when you were at your lowest. You awesome. Uh, si uh, we already did Cynthia's. Let's go with Adam. So with knowing Prism beforehand, um, I would assume I, I know your original name by, of course, obviously I've accepted you as Prism. Mm -hmm. um, so for my back, for my references or um, yeah, relationships, excuse me, 
I grabbed the wrong paper. I have decided that, yes, I told Prism my uh, shame, or actually, since we have known each other for a while, um, Prism kind of figured out what happened to Malon and what Malon is um, due to the fact that we all three of us kind of worked in the same lab. Um, if we want to play around with the origin story of Prism um, being kind of kind of Flux's fault, not not fault, but <laughs> uh, condition. Um, defined interaction. Defined interaction, yeah. Um, it could also probably in, be involved with what happened to uh, with Malin originally. So, um, yeah, lots of lots of things going on on with Flux here, but we we accept her, and we're trying to make her better. Wait a second, wait a second. When you expand the origin story further, uh, Galaxia, is your spacecraft magnetic? Oh, um, gosh. I don't know. No. no. My, yeah, my spacecraft is, um, it's, I, I control it via telepathy. Mm hmm um and um it's is it metal uh, or plastic bioorganic yeah i was gonna say i was gonna say like neither it's made <sighs> of stars you know the the ship from young justice mm, that mcgann pilot you go I, I dig it yeah. i dig it i'll still throw out the idea maybe you know we'll still run with it but my thought was all right flux is there the lab's imploding, people are flying into beams, and then, you know, Galaxia is just sort of flying along, having a good time, and what's this? We're going down towards a facility on Earth? What is this about? I like it. I do wish I could be more, a better hero, more like Galaxia, because um, from the little I've uh, known about her so far, just seems like the coolest, so... <laughs> She's kind so, of the coolest. She's she's kind of the coolest. So that uh, that's kind of how, how I uh, kind of chose there. Um, I created something lasting and beneficial for the whole team. I basically, <laughs> once Flux came into our lives, um, I basically tur turned the entire lab into um, a facility um, made of lead. <laughs> something that can't be magnetized or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Safest keep it simple. Bet. <laughs> Let's keep it simple there, you know. <laughs> awesome. And our wonderful fourth member of the team, Galaxia. Your relationships. Yes. So, um uh I've been uh learning about Earth by uh spending a lot of time with Flux um it's been uh, a, a fantastic time um we we really get to go out and uh enjoy some of what we we find to be the uh the best and uh most colorful and uh, uh joyous parts of humanity and uh, um i i uh i really relish in that um it's kind of it's very uh very different from what i had back home um and then i've got a crush on uh prism because prism is uh like i was definitely initially caught like um um i really <laughs> i enjoy things that um uh i can see vastness in and things that like you know the anything that that reflects that that gives um uh, like that spark of creation that that idea of star stuff and like the idea that that you can continue uh or, or make something new um and so uh first galaxia was just completely in awe of the way that light 
moves through some of Prism's crystals. Um, and then uh, as like we got to know each other, like I got to, uh, you know, really get to get to know who you were, uh, you know, besides just something that was like aesthetically pleasing to me um, and uh, get to care about you as like as a person. Um, yeah. As a being mm. as entirely. A being. Yeah, yeah, I... like, because <clears throat> that's the thing. I feel like at this point, like we're t- we're the two members who are really kind of out of this world, mm. so to speak. <laughs> yes, yes, I like, love it so much. Yeah, the the intertwining between everybody's characters, especially, it's going to help with that moving through these these difficult situations that you guys are going to be facing um as well as the realization for some of the people here maybe prism doesn't realize that flux is the person at the center of their transformation yeah maybe they it was weren't just an accident i never figured out what the cause was it might be that Flux's crunch on the electromagnetic field around Earth the first time her powers activated is what brought Galaxia to this planet so long ago. Mm. Galaxia, you bringing things from the astral and ether here to this world might have been the infection that affected Jules's wife. And Jules, the energy that you're trying to get a better handle on or a better understanding in order to fix what happened before is a combination of that energy that came from Galaxia that Flux interacted with that transformed Prism. But these are just theories. This is just a possibility. This isn't all locked in stone, but the, this is just how wonderful this system is when the session zero is gone through with everybody together to build and develop these stories, to have this mm-hmm. idea of it's not just your identity or your secret identity or even your powers, but how you have interacted with the world and the world has interacted with you before stepping into it which i think is Mm -hmm. amazing and from the looks on your guys's faces it sounds like wonderful so i'm gonna type that stuff down later not on stream so i can have it saved and prepped and ready (laughs) to throw it (laughs) Um, oh shit but now from there we're going to jump into the next portion of the whole thing which was when our team first came together now this is not the origin of powers this is not the the accident that led to prism this is when the four of you first decided to work together to solve a problem or save people or work alongside the heroes of Halcyon City. So with that, we will start with Adam. So from yours, if you would read us the, uh, when our team first came together. Okay. When our team first came together, I created something lasting and beneficial for the whole team. Um, I created um, simple kind of just simple plates um, like that uh, can go. Like almost like wristbands, like bracelets. 
um, made of, uh, of plastic and lead. Um, and it has um, like a button you can press to communicate with basically edge created communication devices for all of us. Um, just to make sure we keep in touch with each other. Once yeah. our, um, once we uh, kind of take down the beat um, or try to take the big baddie down. Awesome. So the group, now not only after what happened, has a safe space for Flux and everyone to be within uh, in order to operate out of and help one another, Jules created wristbands that act as communication devices for the team. And um, I'll add that with um, Jules's uh, kind of constant fragrance going on around him, um, he quickly, quickly put some form of comforting fragrance to, uh, for the team. So something they can kind of smell and comfort, take comfort in that. Love it this oh this is beautiful up next coral if you would read your when the team when our team first came together so um when our team first came together we didn't trust each other at first but that changed how and why um I think for me, I well, so off the right off the bat, I can imagine that we didn't trust each other at first, um, because the three of you have seemed to have a three-way tied-in backstory with a pretty major moment. So, I mean, I'm just positing that as a possibility. Um, Y'all are welcome to pick it up or leave it as you so choose. Um, but I'm I'm not part of part of that that backstory, so I don't want to make the choice for you. Um, I feel like for me, it was um, you did y'all didn't trust me because I was weird as hell. I, I I I just crash landed on Earth. And didn't, I don't know. I didn't know uh, really. Y'all probably no. You didn't see me wandering around naked. I saw humans wearing clothes, and I was all like, "Great, we're gonna copy that." Um, oh, um, no, I know exact. Okay, so right, it's all coming back to me now. The exact backstory. I crash landed in front of a uh, or near near a drag bar, mm -hmm. um, and so my very first right off the bat interpretation of humanity was drag queens, um, and so that is that is uh, y'all probably met me like in full full drag, smack middle of the day. <laughs> Um, and just like being like, Hey, what's going on? Um, which I, I wouldn't necessarily know if I would trust that person off the bat. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea who she is, but she has life. impeccable fashion taste. Right. Yeah. Um, but then how did that change? How'd that change? Um, it changed, uh, because um oh gosh i galaxia uh wears her heart on her sleeve so i really feel like it wouldn't take long for you to be like oh okay now she's just misguided but she's she's nice you know um because like i i like to think she um um it, very Starfire doesn't really have like a much of a bad bone in her body, um, type of a deal, uh, uh, and really seeking joy. Um, as to how that was displayed, 
and shown to y'all, I'm not sure on the specific. Um, Would you care for a nudge? Yeah. What's what you got in mind? Uh, well, Galaxia does have a pheromone releasing capability. This what is if in presenting herself as trusting those pheromones showed to the others that you were in fact trusting not so much in a mind control manipulation kind of thing but gave a clarity of mind to the mm. others mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Does that sound I like that sound good okay yeah definitely where it's yeah kind of like uh you know putting it in uh D, D terms like cast a little zone of truth and it's all like no trust i'm like i'm a good get <laughs> i'm good i good bitch. guarantee you i'm a good person i i have nothing but <laughs> yeah, the best like, interests in mind yeah um and um and yeah i i think um uh that's where that was the moment where it was all like all right fine we'll we'll try it but then um literally uh after you know a few days you're all like oh okay <laughs> yeah this, this was thing, real. yeah <laughs> yeah okay fine yeah for sure um and yeah is all that right. the how and the why i think the, yeah, yeah why that was how and why why uh, because we love each other the team didn't trust each other at first because galaxia was an alien and the accidents before but that changed when Galaxia shown clarity of the mind to the others and trustfulness to those around her. Hit the nail on the head. Lego, thank you for translating my 10 words into five. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Um, <laughs> Cynthia. Sir. <Dark. laughs> Your when the when our team first came together we would read that for us sure we destroyed our surroundings in the fight where was it and what did we destroy i'd say that we were in downtown what's the city called calcyon city downtown calcyon city um and what was it that we destroyed? I think that there was a gigantic droid that is out to snuff out our kind. And we mm. destroyed the heck out of it. So in a large enhanced seeking yes. droid was destroyed. Is it the first time we'd ever seen something like that? Like it. Like it. Because I do think Big big Mouse Ears did officially trademark the M word. Did they? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. why I said our kind. Our types. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, also, I also feel like that the other team that is in the city, I think, failed to destroy. And I feel like we were the reluctant group that was like, ah! You guys suck at this. <laughs> you guys don't know what you're doing. We've got a droid specialist over here. We've got an alien with a spaceship. We got a man, a person made of crystals, and I can just destroy the metal on it if I need to. Yeah. Um question. Answer. Now knowing that that was that that is somebody else's question. Mm -hmm. Can I tweak my situation? Absolutely. What are you tweaking? So I I think instead of instead of necessarily doing my my zone of truth pheromones. Mm -hmm. If if our first if the first time we came together was like a jump into action, oh shit, there's something going down. Mm -hmm. Um I think then um I think then y'all would see that um 
uh, my very first instinct would be to um, uh, use my spaceship to um, try to get as many people to safety as possible. I like that. Um, yeah, like you would see that, um, yeah, right off the bat, my instinct is to protect, um, especially the innocent. Um, and also, did did I hear something about this um, this person we were, the, were, the thing we were going up against, was it also from Spasse? No, not from Spasse. Okay, great. But okay. is a large um, enhanced, uh, a large enhanced seeking droid. Okay, cool. Cool. Because I was going to say, I was all like, if it was, if, if, if I brought it here, then there would be uh, even, even more responsibility uh, I would, that I would feel um, to keep people safe and um well, not this, fucked up by my shit. This destroying of this large droid and identifying that it was seeking out enhanced beings, especially in Halcyon City, where it is the superhero mecha, uh, is what brought about the invitation for the four of you to the Sentinels of Halcyon and the Masquerade of the Mighty which is the induction ceremony. But we're not going to talk too much about that, Vin, because I really want everybody to get the whole experience in session one. But not from Spasse. Uh, and then ELH, if yeah. you would read your When Our Team First Came Together. So actually, this is all coming together lovely. Um, so my when our first team to, uh, first uh, team first came together, it is we drew attention and ire from plenty during the fight. One important person in particular now hates and fears us, and who is it? So if we'll continue on uh, referencing established characters in universes that are trademarked. Um, I'm thinking something like a Lex Luthor type or a Fisk type or. It, I, was Magneto the one that did the Sentinels and X-Men? I'm trying to remember. It's been so long. Trask. That was Trask. Okay. But something uh, like that. Clarification. Trask invented them and used them the first round, but Magneto actually ended up utilizing them later on. There we go. Yep. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking somebody on that level where it's like we have a very powerful enemy that maybe as time goes on, maybe they throw more and more things at us. Now, I don't have a name for you, unfortunately, but uh... we'll say that their name is Vanquish Industries. Vanquish Industries. All right. Oh, my God. That what stage of capitalism is that? Vanquish Industries is known for providing medical equipment and medications to those of Halcyon City. They are the mega conglomerate who also provide the medications and things necessary for people who don't wish to have their powers to no longer have to carry that burden. Oh, we're fighting Big, big Pharma? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. So, in recap, when the team first came together, Jules Gray Spark created a series of wristbands made of plastic and lead that allowed the group to communicate together with a comforting fragrance to the individual within. The team didn't trust each other at first, initially because Galaxia was an alien, but that changed when Galaxia used her spaceship to rescue and save as many people as possible. The team destroyed the surroundings in downtown city Halcyon, and the large enhanced seeking droid was destroyed that had never been seen before. The team drew attention and ire from plenty during the fight. One important people in particular now hates and fears you. Their name is Vanquish Industries. We have the beginnings of the masquerades of the mighty now 
we move to the all too and deeply important part of this, which is influence. Now, look over the influence questions that are there. And as you guys are looking over that, I'm going to explain it a little bit for everybody. So each one of you are going to give influence to your teammates. Influence is a resource, but it is a two-way street resource. Either someone has it over you or they don't. If someone has influence over you, it means that they care about what you think or you care about what they think, say, or do about or towards you. It means that their words carry weight and can change how you see yourself. By default, all major heroes hold influence over the PCs. So any and all major heroes within Halcyon City or in the Sentinels of Halcyon, the great justice gathering uh, will have influence. Uh, each one of your playbooks has a section that describes how much influence you give out to your teammates. Some of them give none. Some of them give one. Some of them give two. Some of them say to give influence to all members of the team. Another important thing to take into consideration is that you can always choose to give out more influence. If you feel that your character cares about this, another person's words or thoughts or approach to your character, you can happily give influence over to that character, or to that person, but you cannot take it away once it is given it has to be lost so while looking over those things adam what does your playbook say for influence you need these people as much as they need you give influence to two of your teammates so which two and again you can give more if you would like to which two teammates would you like to give influence to? Well, first one I would like to give influence to uh, Flux immediately comes to mind because of the uh, anxiety and uncomfort she has with her powers. So influence to try and calm. Um, this is someone whose words weigh on you. Not that your words weigh on them, that their words weigh on you. Okay, what, what she's okay. So okay. what she says affects me. Yes. Gotcha. Um, then uh, if I hear what she has to say, then it might affect me. Um, I'll um, I'll give one to uh, uh, to Prism since we're connected already. Um, and... I'm not completely sure. I, I, I think I still trust... I think I trust uh, Galaxia. But... Um, you absolutely can. What we described previously is what has already happened in the past for your yeah. characters. Yeah, yeah. So at this point, yeah, I probably would um, give influence to um, Galaxy as well. I mean, you you don't have to. I am just a space weirdo. Okay. A hot space <laughs> weirdo. But a space weirdo. Uh, I think I, I yeah, because I think I'd be more influenced by what, what you're doing since I'd already want to be a better hero like you. So that, that's kind of what, what, where I'm coming from there. Hell yeah. Right. Um, but so, F Flux is almost like, okay, I, I, I need to protect this. I, I, I don't want to say child, but for lack of a better word. <laughs> like I this, need to protect this person. They need to protect this person, yeah. Basically. If, you, if you would like to give them influence, if you feel that they would 
their words would affect you um, deeply, then you can absolutely give them influence. What would happen if I gave out more than um, I uh, can have? You, as long as you give what is required on the sheet, you're good. Anything more than that is just adding to the role play or story capabilities later on down the road. Okay. Yeah. I feel at this point, since, you know, the other emotional relationship Jules had is basically a robot, an emotionless robot right now, probably would be all three of you. All right. So yeah. all three of you under influences, go ahead and write Jules's name down that you do have influence with Jules. Um, next, let's go to Coral to read your influences. Mine is super duper easy. Um, choose your demeanor, haughty or cheerful. If you are haughty, you think you are better than them. Give no one influence. If you are cheerful, you're thrilled to be here. Give everyone influence over you. You get an influence, and you get an influence. Everybody gets an influence. <laughs> Look under your chair. Look under your chair. Influence. <laughs> influence. <laughs> influence. <laughs> yep. So yeah. everyone, Mark Galaxia, as someone you have influence with. I'm just really happy to be here, y'all. Uh, Cynthia, if I'm you glad you read... chose, I'm glad you chose that way because my influence says choose your demeanor: happy facade or locked down. And originally, I wanted to be the happy facade because it says if you choose happy facade, you give influence to three teammates. I don't feel like Flux would be that happy about things. Um, not that she's not happy. But the other choice is to be locked down. And I feel like Flux would be much more guarded with her emotions because she's afraid of everything. Um, and so I think, given the history with Grace Spark and the fact that she blows off steam with Galaxia, I think the person's most influence on her, like who would actually like stop her from doing things, is probably going to be Prism. Okay. And yeah. actually, I think that actually works out well with mine because um, mine is I try not to care what other people think, even if you can't shut everyone out. I have to give my influence to one teammate. And this might sound a little bit weird, but trying to get in the headspace of Prism, obviously we have someone made of stars. We have, you know, certain characters from Fantastic Four who we can't name because of copyright reasons. And then we have, for lack of a better term, a more normal individual, someone who is more afraid of themselves rather than afraid of others, something in that general ballpark anyway. And I was actually going to give Prism influence over me, you know, thinking that, hey, since they're the quote unquote most normal, maybe I think a lot about what they think of me kind of a thing. Well, giving I mean, flux or flux. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. So awesome. Flux, you have. Influence over every member of the team. <laughs> mm -hmm. no. I'm going to change reason, a super villain now. <laughs> the reason why this is important and the reason why influence is such a big thing, um, not only because it reflects on our, our own interpretation of our characters interacting with other people, but there's also the mechanical portion of it, which is when someone would influence over you tells you who you are or how the world sees you you have two choices you can accept what they say or you can reject their influence and this is how you take that influence away from the other person if you accept what they say i will then tell you to move one of your labels up and one of your labels down because it is now directly impacting how you are viewing yourself based on a person that their words hold weight to you. If you want to keep your labels the way that they are, you reject their influence. 
which is one of the basic moves that is included in here uh, that allows you to roll versus their influence. And if you succeed, you take that influence away from them and you maintain your belief and your ideas of who you are and what you are and not allowing them to change how you view yourself. Now, with all of that now in place, Cynthia, I want you to describe Flux in her entirety now, who she is. All right. Well, Stella Iman, also known as Flux, is a kind of um, early 30s um, former fashion model. Um, she has naturally orange ombre hair um, and tan skin. She doesn't necessarily know her background, but she does, does know that she is a, a, a true Latina. Um, so she kind of gets by with doing the work that she can. Um, she heard about a laboratory that was around to, to help um, people's afflictions. Um, and considering that she thinks that she is a danger to society due to um, her incident at a fashion show, utilizing her powers for the first time, she sought out um, Jules Graysbark. She calls him Dr. Graysbark. Um, in seeking out Grace Spark, um, she couldn't control her emotions because of what was going on. She was probably describing what had happened her first time seeing her powers, that the emotional overload caused a cataclysmic moment in time where the electromagnetic fields, something happened and something else happened to somebody else, um, causing a crunch within the, the realities of the world. Um, since then, she has learned how to control her emotions uh, due to probably some work with uh, Grace Spark and learning um, and meeting Prism for the first time has also really helped shape who she was and kind of keep everything on lockdown. Um, upon going to a couple of drag shows, she actually runs into um, Gal uh, Galaxia for the first time. And I think that's kind of where they, they form kind of a BFF kind of situation. And um, upon hearing some of the destruction that was happening in downtown, um, she kind of looked at the rest of the crew and was like, I think we need to do something because these superheroes don't seem to have their, their shit together. Um, so they make their way to, to downtown and they realize that there is a giant droid in the middle of the city that something needed to happen and they all jumped into action. And the only thing that Flux knew what to do was to literally think about destroying the particles or the, the metallic pieces that were coming off of it. So she used her powers to like pull it apart and as a result ended up destroying a little bit of the city. You just, 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 just a little bit. Um, but all was saved and they, she and, and, and the team, we all got an invite to somewhere mysterious. Awesome. Adam, if you could give us Jules Grace Spark. You're muted, Adam. All right, so, uh... Jules Grace Park, uh, late 40s, uh, kind of a uh, salt and pepper hair, as you said. Um, he was a scientist uh, with uh, research in medical science as well as uh, robotics. Um, he was smart enough to basically research anything he really wanted to. Um, an accident uh, transformed his uh, um, love to his partner to... Um, uh, ca caused her to be transformed into a robot. Um, not necessarily transformed. I helped create the robot to help her survive uh, at the cost of uh, of all her memories. Um, but I was still able to kind of fund all that uh, by having a medical um, facility um, that helps cure. Um, yeah, that helps uh, cure or treat. Uh, people with such afflictions um, uh, of superpowers or, or anything like that to help them cope with that. Um, and one day, 
I was met by, uh, I uh, had a scheduled meeting with this uh, one lady named, um, I, I believe she just um, scheduled her meeting with under the name of Flux. So um, as I met with Flux, um, going to greet her, all of a sudden um, I notice um, Malin, my robot, coming closer to me um, a little faster than usual, a little too fast and kind of just knocked into me as we both come crashing towards um, Flux um, for a really um, interesting first meeting with her. Um, and in that kind of collision um, was kind of quickly was able to figure out um, how to hel first help her uh, cope with the powers. Um, so she could at least be able to walk around. Um, the anxiety um, and, and the mental um, health aspect of it, um, I I tried other me I, I do try other methods with that, but um, ultimately probably recommended a different um, an actual ther a proper therapist because he Gray Sparks dealing with his own traumas, <laughs> um, and uh, during that time. Um, I always like to check in on uh, Flux uh, to make sure everything's all right with uh, the invention I gave to her, um, during which time, during a certain meeting, um, that little explosion happened. Um, I, I guess uh, an event happened that caused her to kind of lose anx uh, anxiety and cause such a thing to happen within the city and that part of uh, Halcyon. Awesome. Next, ELH. Yeah, so James Hammerman, now Prism, is a prismatic creature, sort of similarly styled to a bird in some respects. But their origin, as it were, was tied to the Flux incident, where they were working on a particle accelerator or some form of... Uh, particle emitting device and long story short they get caught in the beam their being is reconstituted into this prismatic crystal they are a bit still out of sorts with who they've become but thanks to the influence and meeting the rest of the team um, they are slowly beginning to accept not only themselves but what the future might look like though he does wonder what's going on with Vanquish Industries because every time he feels like he looks over his corner, he sees an ad or he sees like a car labeled by Vanquish Industries. There's just a lot of them showing up around him for some reason. He's he's getting a little paranoid about it. And Galaxia. So uh, Galaxia is an entity of unknown age um, because your calendars probably don't go back that far. Um, <clears throat> however, uh, as far as um, Earth, she's a fucking baby. Um, uh, she 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 came down from uh, from the, uh, the depths of the universe, um, and uh, her her ship was uh, was grounded on Earth, um, and uh, yeah, as I as I said previously, um, the uh, she landed during uh, evening, uh, late night. Uh, about the time uh, where everybody was going out, and she, the first, uh, the first humans that she saw were um, uh, a group of drag queens um, outside the uh, the back door of the bar having a smoke break, and um, so that is her um, definition of humanity. Um, she uh, uh, also became incredibly enamored with it, um, considering how uh, the you know the sequins and sparkles reminded her of um, of uh, the, the stars. <laughs> uh, 
and um you know the 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 spark of light and um so yeah so yeah that's the the usual form that she takes she's a very very tall glamorous woman um uh uh, but she has the ability to shift uh, depending on the circumstances and situation. However, as to whether or not she understands what those are yet, totally different story. Um, yeah. Uh, that's uh, the, the, I, I want to be here because humans are really nice on the, on the most part. Um, and uh, I, I, there's a a sense of um, life and looseness. Um, I I don't know if I'll necessarily discuss it here, but I'll discuss with Will specifically why I ended up leaving um, leaving my home to begin with. Notes um, notes will be yeah. passed. <laughs> yeah, no idea no idea what it is as of yet, but um, I definitely know that I found something in humanity that I did not have back home um and uh and i i really i feel like i can learn a lot from it i love it i love it and now with that we have created this wonderful team for the masquerade of the mighty i'm gonna give us huge huge amount of adoration and admiration to each one of you. I appreciate you guys so much for the depth you've put into these characters, the ideas, as much as they've they've grown and become so much more right now than they were two hours ago before we sat down in front of each other and started building these wonderful beings in front of this also wonderful collection of viewers. Thank you guys so much. I hope and pray and wish to see each and every one of you, if not more of you, in the first session of Masquerade of the Mighty. So we'll go in reverse order this time on our sign-offs. Uh, we will start with ELH. Go ahead and let everybody know where to find you, the projects you're working on right now, and yeah, boost yourself up. Confidence building movement right now. Of course, of course. Uh, yeah, I'm ELH or ELHMK1 on all the socials, except Instagram, because I don't believe in the TikToks and the Instagram, old man yells a cloud, whatever. Um, I am, again, a primarily Star Trek Adventures and Cyberpunk Red GM, but I'm always interested in running uh, new things, such as another Avatar Legends game, which is a different Powered by the Apocalypse, also made by Magpie Games. So, I don't know. I mean, if you want to... So, you know, we'll talk, you know, maybe as a group afterwards. But if you want to see more Avatar Legends content, if you want to see Star Trek, definitely hit me up. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. What am I missing? Oh, right. I do the whole VTuber thing, which I guess if you haven't noticed that by now, uh, hello. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Up next, Coral. Hello, friends. My name is Coral Reefer. You can find me uh, at twitch.tv slash queerventuretime and uh, at qventuretime on Twitter because queerventuretime was too many characters. We're, uh, we're a community-based stream. We, we play games, but uh, we play games that we can pause so that way we can stop playing the game and then go off on a big long chaotic tangent about some topic that somebody has proposed in chat and it's fun <laughs> you can also consistently find me there in chat anytime <laughs> coral's there um adam hi everyone adam joseph ferry aka adam turns heel on all social medias i just realized a lot of things i forgot in the first introduction uh i am a audiobook narrator uh and i am um, you can find a couple of the books i've narrated on uh audible uh through uh, uh acx and all of that um if you want me to read your books let me know uh i am also um a variety streamer on twitch also adam turns heel um serve an ice cream in newport beach and uh bowling wherever i can <laughs> awesome next 
Miss Cynthia Marie. Hey y'all. Um, I just I'm so happy to be here. Like <laughs> Um, I'm Cynthia Marie. You guys can find me on Twitter at Sundancer or Instagram, Cynthia underscore underscore Marie. Um, I honestly don't like to talk about too many of my shows, but you asked for it. So I'm going to kind of tell you, um, and also somebody kind of let the cat out the bag on in the chat. So yeah, I, I am on, or was on LA by night. I played Nelly G. Um, this time around I'm on New York by night. I play Coco. So please join us in chat on the world of darkness, Twitch channel every Friday, um, at 7 PM Pacific, 7, 8, 9, 10 PM Eastern and somewhere in between. Um, I'm usually in the chat. I play Coco, the La Sombra. Um, I am also, this one's actually really, I'm also really excited about this next game I'm going to be playing. I am play testing or the, no, no, it's for the release of Regency call of cthulhu yes i'm living my best bridgerton fantasy it is next week on that is not what i was looking for next week's monday monday next week on monday um 6 p.m pacific time is i believe what it's looking like or 6 30 somewhere in there just look at the socials i'll tell you what time it is um otherwise another kind of fun cool quirky thing we were talking about um um Renegade Games came out with Vampire Rivals cards, and yours truly is on a card. So you can go buy my character, her name. Um, well, she's a she's a Tremere. I don't even think it has her name on it. Um, but so yeah, you can go find those somewhere on on Renegade Games and go like find and go play my card because she's awesome. Anywho, I have a bunch of other things that I do, but like I don't want to talk about them right now because we're all tired and hungry and all the things so just come find me i love y'all good night <laughs> elh i'm being reminded of a book you're supposed to bring up oh am i supposed book? to shout out my okay so i i normally don't talk about this but i'm a science fiction author as well i have actually released my first debut novel on amazon happy to throw a link at whoever wants and i'll even t say this because i say it whenever i you know guest star in a session you don't have to pay for my book. Like, yes, it's nice if you pay for my book, but honestly, shoot me an email. My email's on my socials. I will send you a PDF copy for free on the condition that you review the book. That's all I ask. And if you need a narrator for that book, let me know. I think we're going to talk after the session. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Arclight Court. I am Will. I am the presence in GM for here at Masquerade the Mighty. You can find me on Instagram at Will Sirachi PGM. That's W I L L S U R A C I P G M. And at Arclight Court, where I am the lore keeper, the bringer of stories and heroes, villains, and every and all in between. You can find us here, Cyber Nation Uncensored, the second Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you all again for being here with us as we crafted these characters. Thank you players for these wonderful characters you've put together. Thank you Cyber Nation Uncensored for allowing us to present this story to everyone here. You guys have a wonderful evening. And on Tuesdays, we wear masks. Cyber Nation Uncensored.